Hi, this is Greg from Virginia Beach EMS, and this is the new Panasonic CF20 uh, fully ruggedized notebook. Today I want to demonstrate some of the features of the computer and show you how to use it. So first things first, let's go ahead, open the computer, and power it on. There's a little latch here in the front. Flip it open, and it's actually going to go ahead and power on all by itself. Uh, this is coming up out of sleep mode, which is what it's supposed to do. We are going to be using a sleep feature, and I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. When these prompts come up, just go ahead and click Other Credentials and switch User. And here you are now at the uh, new home screen. Um, this is a modern uh, piece of hardware with a, uh, a good processor, solid state hard drive. Um, you know, all the good bells and whistles. Uh, certainly a significant step up from the computers that we're using today. Let's talk about where some of the ports are located. So for doing life pack um, integrations, we have the doors on the side of the computer. And this is there's a number of uh, ports down this side and this side. I think this is the one most folks are going to use. These are weatherproof ports. So to access them, you need to move them in line with the computer. So a little arrow here, slide it up. We're going to open, and then right here is the USB port. Go ahead, plug in the LifePak cable, do what you need to do, and then when you're done, go ahead, close that, and slide it down. Charging the computer, it's on the same side. It's actually right down over here. Again, you're going to slide it in the direction of the arrows, or toward uh, the, uh, the front part of the computer. Open the port and plug in your charger. These use the exact same chargers that we're used to using today. Uh, we did get some new chargers with these computers and we'll be distributing those um, and you'll go ahead and charge in through this port. Now uh, these doors do appear to be a little bit on the flimsy side and it wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if this is some of the first stuff to go ahead and get broken on these. Uh, let's not try to encourage that but uh, we'll just kinda see how something like this goes. Um, and then the stylus. The stylus is on this side of the screen. Uh, the way that I've been taking the stylus in and out is a nice gentle tug down, bring the pen out, do whatever it is that you need to do on the screen, and then to insert pointy and up, slide in, and gentle snap. We don't have to be rough with this. It will come in and out. I don't have any replacements of these yet, so please be gentle. So let's see what's next. All right, let's go ahead and let's launch Elite. So Elite is going to be on everyone's desktop. Uh, same thing as FieldBridge. Uh, these are going to be going out uh, to the fleet starting in September, and so you're going to have both FieldBridge and uh, Elite uh, installed on here. When Elite comes up, uh, you'll go ahead and you'll sign in, and there'll be a plenty of other videos to go ahead and talk about that. But I wanted to demonstrate uh, probably the coolest thing uh, about this type of computer, and that is it is also a tablet. So you see this little release lever down here. I'm going to slide that to the right and pull up, and now we have a tablet computer. Now, when Windows senses this going from laptop mode into tablet mode, it does take a moment to go ahead and complete the undock sequence. This keyboard, for the most part, acts as a docking station. So uh, please give the, the computer just a moment or two before uh, doing something with it when you transition either into or out of the docked mode. Um, one of the other nice things about uh, the uh, the screen is that uh, it will go ahead and rotate with you. This is something that's going to be really helpful when we start talking about Elite just because um, you'll be able to go ahead and see that much more on the screen at any one given time. Now if I was to go ahead and log in, oh let me show you, we've got the glove here on the back that you can go ahead and use. I've been putting my hand in this way and find that to be pretty comfortable, um, especially when it goes into a position like this. This is, uh, I'm over to the camera's left. Uh, this is a pretty comfortable position for me to go ahead and work with this. I'm also left-handed, so uh, you'll uh, develop your own personal preferences. But uh, if you go ahead and you uh, put the cursor and you tap into the box, uh, you notice a keyboard doesn't pop up uh, like what we expect on our phones. So down here, uh, down by the system tray, there's a little button. Let me go ahead and zoom in there for you. Uh, this is something that will go ahead and bring up the on-screen keyboard. So you could use the pen or your finger to go ahead and type on the on-screen keyboard, um, which you probably won't need to do a whole lot when it's in tablet mode. Elite is really good about being touch-friendly uh, with lots of big buttons, so uh, you're really only going to use use this for your narratives uh, and maybe a few other key details. So I don't expect folks are going to be using this a whole lot. And then when you're done, just go ahead and click uh, the X. Now, just like what I said uh, in coming out of uh, 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 dock mode, 
when we slide things in, first of all, uh, this is a nice uh, indicator to say, hey, this screen is not attached. Make sure you give it a nice push until it clicks into place. Um, this is a computer I've actually been using for a couple of weeks on and off. The brand new ones that we have, uh, it actually takes a little bit of extra time and just a little bit of extra pressure. So please make sure that's in place because otherwise you send it uh, put it to one side and it will take a tumble and I know that from personal experience. Um, these are fully ruggedized computers and uh, you know unlike the the C2's, the, the, uh, the intermediate laptops that we bought a few years back um, that are only semi-ruggedized, semi these are designed to withstand drops and a variety of other things. So what we want to do is uh, we want to be good uh, custodians of this equipment and do what we can to take care of it, but at the same time it is designed for field use. Uh, when you close the lid, as we saw in the beginning, it will go ahead and put the computer into sleep mode. Now, we disabled sleep on the other computers because they were slow, and if you were to come out of sleep, it's something that would go ahead and take a minute or so. But just like you noticed at the beginning of the video, it only takes a moment for it to come out of sleep. Uh, but you do need to give it uh, just a little bit of time to do so and then it will come up and you click other credentials and switch user, accept the privacy policy, blah blah blah. Um, couple other things. So these computers uh, do keep them charged throughout the day, but they are supposed to have an 8 to 10 hour battery life on them. So uh, like with a lot of devices, it's never a bad thing for you to go ahead and let it discharge uh, for a period of time. So keeping it plugged in all the time shouldn't be necessary, and if we're seeing some issues with battery life, uh, we'll certainly address that. But um, don't feel like you have to constantly keep it plugged in. Let that battery drain down a little bit and it's going to prolong the life of the battery as well as help with cooling. And at the end of your shift, turn the computer off. If, if no one's going to be using it on the uh, immediate next shift, completely power it off. Um, I know there's been mixed messages that have come out in the past, but if it's not in use, uh, it's really not doing anybody any good uh, by being powered on and just staying hot, uh, especially in an unair conditioned ambulance in the, the summertime and that's going to save the battery it's going to save some wear and tear on the screen too. Uh, let me go ahead and I am going to go ahead and power off so just go ahead and click shut down and it takes just a moment to do that. Coming out uh, with the computers we're going to have some cleaning cloths. This is a nice microfiber uh, cleaning cloth like what you would use on your glasses and to go ahead and take fingerprints off go ahead and just gently give it a wipe. If you use regular paper towels this is a nice brand new screen. Um, you use a paper towel on that and if you really start to scrub a spot it's going to scratch the screen so please don't do that. If you uh, need to decon it, I mean obviously go ahead and decon it uh, because that's uh, an important thing but uh, don't scrub on it or that's going to start to scratch the screen up. And also too uh, if you uh, put stickies over on the right side of, of the uh, computer uh, like most of us do uh, just exercise a little bit of gentle care. You don't have to rub those things on quite so rough because when you take them off it leaves a residue. Uh, if that does happen use some alcohol prep that will go ahead clean the screen up very nicely and uh, we'll keep these things looking sharp and uh, keeping them uh, nice and usable for the five years that we plan to keep them for. One last thing, if you do have problems with the computer, please talk to a duty supervisor. They're going to have the procedures in place to go ahead and get you a new computer as quickly as possible. And they may also ask you to fill out a DF-75 if something is damaged on the computer. Now this isn't about punishing people, it's about understanding what happened that led up to some damage if it did occur. If you drop it and it broke, I need to know that because I need to communicate that back to Panasonic to say, look, you're not meeting our warranty requirements. Um, if you run over it with a zone car and you know who you are, um, I don't expect that to be covered under warranty, but we'll still go ahead and we'll get it taken care of. But I want to make sure that Panasonic honors our, their warranty. Uh, we paid extra money for that and uh, that we do get the five years worth of life out of this computer that uh, we were expecting. Uh, finally, if anybody ever asks you what the serial number is, I have great big stickers that I'm putting on there, and it's actually on both halves of the computer. We shouldn't have to swap these things around anytime. So that's pretty much it. Here's the new Panasonics. Look for them sometime in September. Have any questions, contact your duty supervisor, or feel free to email me at the info on your screen.